is a good way. I mean, one of the reasons why I personally choose to drop certain things is because I do not want to sacrifice my health further mm. and I don't want to sacrifice the relationships in my life further. So I just am honest with my client that I want to focus on real estate and my podcast business and some of the other stuff that I'm doing, like spending time with my wife, learning how to longboard and stuff like that. Um, therefore, I, I cannot really work with you anymore. I, it's not you, it's me. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Wise and Shine. I'm your host Don, aka Ashley Bajabeb, and today we don't have Reggie with us, unfortunately. Say <laughs> what um, I want to say. Yes, yeah, so we are replacing <laughs> him officially. Uh, uh, that was a joke. We're replacing him with someone more handsome and smarter. Okay, okay, Reggie, don't kill me. But yes, we have. Yeah, Reggie, don't fire me, please. <laughs> Not like you pay me, but yes, don't fire me, please. <laughs> um, yes, hi, I'm Anthony, part of the TFC team. Good to be back. And we are going to talk about a really special topic today. I think it's something that's really super important, especially as the workload for many of us have increased and going into this new year, we want to also figure out how to better balance. And sometimes the answer to that means learning how to say no. Mm. And to help us answer that question, we have invited JJ. And the interesting thing is, as a multi hyphenate himself, he has also started to realize that in that process of exploring for several years, 10 years, right? You mm. see, some things, it's time to say no and to cut. So we're going to dive into the topic today. But JJ, before we go there, do you want to introduce yourself to the audience? Hi, hi, uh, I'm JJ. You can find me online at I Am Falling Feathers. I do a bunch of stuff, mainly in marketing, media, and real estate. Actually, to be frank, JJ, you have seven. Right, we're just walking through right, what right, your yeah. mind. We were trying to count this. <laughs> I, I had seven, I think, for a long time. You still have. I mean, you only cut out one officially, right? The rest are in the progress. Yeah, in the progress, in the progress. So um, prior to this, JJ was a pretty well-known musician. And that was the first I thing that say he that, cut. But thank you for being very nice. <laughs> the music was really good. I knew him after he was a good musician. Cut. Yeah, he was a really good musician. It's sad, lah. Singapore loses talents like that because not sustainable. Why? Why? Okay, because but never mind. Listen to our budget episode next time. <laughs> Yeah, but okay, so let's walk through that. Um, mm. So one thing we all know is we have to learn how to say no to certain things mm, mm, in order mm. not to get burnt out, right? And there's yeah. so much talk about mental wellness today. But I think the very big problem that many of us also face is how do you decide what to say no to? So mm. that's the first answer that we're going to be tackling today. Mm. JJ, how did you decide what to cut out? I and how many are you intending to cut out? Oof. Okay, so maybe, maybe we list them, right? We can we can see. Here we go. What's <laughs> I, the seven? I, yeah, I have I trouble doing it. this. Okay, so um, I used to be a marketer freelance. So I work with different brands and clients to help them come up with um, marketing strategies and things like that and hopefully achieve their ROI, right? Uh, so that's one, which I have completely stopped doing uh, since late 2023 due to my capacity. I am a lecturer at three different schools. So I teach at Nanyang Poly, I teach at Singapore Poly, and I also teach at a private music college called the Songwriter Music College. They're all diploma level programs. And I primarily teach communications, media, presentation skills, type of type of topics. Lah. And I used to run a somewhat a media consultancy that uh, as a freelancer that primarily focuses on musicians, comedians, so like entertainment industry kind of thing. And that sort of took off in 2019 when I started to explore freelance platforms like Fiverr, Upwork, and, and that kind of took off. And that became a very solid income stream for me during COVID when a lot of other things cannot operate. Lah. Yeah, so that one, uh, which I've also completely stopped recently, unless friends ask, to help, uh, ask me to help them with their media kits or whatever, then I'll do. Lah. Yeah, so that one, I've kind of completely stopped also. And what else do I do? Uh, once in a while, I, I, still, music. Yeah, I still write and produce music for other people. Last year, I did do an, uh, a jingle for Yakult, you know, and some of the Ooh. brands that, that you might have heard of. Like in the past, I have done uh, stuff for Daikin. So that one, and a bunch of stuff, like, you know, make music. And I, I also write music for other artists and things like that for um, previously for some Korean TV programs, uh, European TV programs and stuff like that. But these days, I only take on projects if I, I really, really, really like like it. La. So last year for the writing production, I've only taken on maybe like six or seven projects. And this year, I don't plan to take on any in the foreseeable future. La. There's that, music production. Uh, I run a media uh, content production studio called IFG Content Co. And we help other people produce content, mainly podcasts and uh, TikTok videos and stuff like that. I also run my own podcast called the One Day at a Time podcast. And essentially is to bring people who are very, very interested 
interesting onto the show to share a bit more about their journey. The last one is a non-income, well, I, I realized past seven already, but the last <laughs> one is a non-income generating one. The one, uh, the ROI is really more for my myself and my soul, uh, which is that um, I hope to spend more time this year advocating for mental health and for general health awareness because unfortunately, a few years ago, because of the overworking and over-hustling, have been diagnosed with an, somewhat of an autoimmune thing uh, called fibromyalgia. And I realized that it's very common among Singaporeans like us who overwork. So, so I hope to create more content to help create more awareness about these kind of illnesses because it's unfortunately incurable. So if anybody out there is kind of really overstressing, overhustling, doing too much, I think I hope to help them not get to a place, a point of no return like me. La. That's why it leads into the topic of cutting, right? Because there are certain consequences to overhustling and overworking that is irreversible. Mm. Such as your health. I think yeah. also the other one I've noticed is some people who over hustle or who take on too much they do so at the expense of their family yeah. the relationships suffer absolutely so how do we then decide what to say no to Anthony you're very mm-hmm. good at saying no to a lot of things right you're the That's one not head true. <laughs> people, people don't show me how to say no right <laughs> um, I, I mean I think the the classical example and, and this is maybe my, my bias right is that you know you're climbing a hill and if you are a mountain climber, you want to climb the highest mountain possible. You are climbing a mountain, you see a next higher peak. The question is, do you continue finishing this one or do you move straight to the next one? Mm. Right? That, that, that is the classic, you know, canonical example that was floating around in 2021 because everyone was going, no, the world is changing, we need to move to the next big thing. I think that that informs a bit of the thinking. What do you want to achieve? Right? What, what's your goal? And is this really what you need? And then you see a different goal, you see a, maybe a bigger, better goal. Then I think this is where I diver, I kind of differ and then I'm a boomer and then I go, but is it likely or not? Is it potential? Maybe I'm just happy with this small mountain. I don't need a big one. Mm-hmm. No, I, I don't necessarily need to climb the highest mountain, right? That, that's not necessary. I don't want to climb a mountain to go by myself and move on to do other things. So, you know, and so so then it becomes a likelihood of success. It becomes, does it make me happy? Does this make me feel content? And, and you know, with my life. And then that's, so it's all a very personal decision to decide, okay, do I really want to do this? Um, okay, I really want to do this. Um, is it going to be good for me? Yes, it's going to be good for me. Then the last question is, do I have time for this? Mm. Right? Then it becomes a matter of priorities because, I mean, there's only 24 hours a day. You need to sleep a certain amount, you know. Then And then there's all those other things. You, you should try to exercise, which I should. You know, you, you should you should spend time with your kids, spend time with your family, spend time with your parents. That all these things are demands on your time, right? Then it's a matter of prioritizing. Okay, if these are non-negotiable, then all my other things have to fit in somewhere. And mm. then that and then that becomes a matter of, okay, then I have three different goals which one should I move at and work towards. Mm. Or do I want to give up maybe one of my non-negotiables for the next six months because I really want to pursue this, right? And then the negotiable can come. Because when you make decisions, it's never permanent. You know? mm. Or at least you try not to make permanent decisions where you kind of screw up and die, mm. right? So you, you can always uh, give up for a few months, then you change back and then you tweak and then you adjust. It's always that cycle and, and that, process of being able to improve and being able to realign and readjust Mm. yeah definitely I think mine's slightly different I actually learned how to say no and I decided and I come up with my own framework of what I will be saying no to Mm. based on all the yeses that I've said in my 20s Mm. so in my 20s I took on a lot of things right every time an opportunity was offered to me as much as I can I'll jump at it so if like when I had my blog for instance I got uh, some inquiries coming in say hey I I read that you you teach general paper can you teach my kid or hey I read that you also do uh, public relations are you still in there I need some consultation what are your rates? I thought I'll take up everything and anything that came my way. But it was because I took all of those out that I got to experience different types of clients, mm. uh, deal with different types of projects. And then it helped me to see men like, okay, I now know for sure after having tried that I don't want this. Or I thought this would give me this, but it didn't. So one example, for instance, and one that I will never forget is a reader turned client. Mm. Uh, it happened in my first or second year of the blog. And this client came to me wanting a PR gig. So I was like, oh, actually easy. La. I've been doing it for the last few years, right? So yeah, sure. And I charged, uh, I, I quoted first, but the client was like, oh, I'm a startup. And tried to use emotional negotiation to bring the fee down. So in the end, I settled for a rate that was really less than ideal. It was very, very minimal. Like mm. honestly, I can, I can give the number is less than 300 la. Wow. Okay, it was very little for the amount of work that I had to do right. but the most frustrating thing was um, so I still took it on because I saw it as an opportunity mm. to make the client and the brand succeed mm. because this would involve influencer work 
So engaging with KOLs at that time, which were not a very big thing yet, yeah. um, and engaging them to bring up the brand. So I thought that, hey, if I can really make this brand become visible, this can go into my portfolio next time. Yeah. Right, so it, it's okay. It's a trade off. I did that, but at the end of the project, I learned that um, the visibility, the branding, what you think may happen, may not always play out. And it was very frustrating because in the end, the back and forth, the client was very, very nil. Mm. I walk away from that whole project with zero dollars mm. because in the end. All the money that she had went to the influencers. And because I was the middle ground between, I was the one who liars with the, uh, the influencers and her brand, and she didn't want to pay the money, all the money that I had gotten the budget all went straight to the influencers, leaving huh. none for me. Mm. So it was really then I realized then I should stop saying yes to this kind of opportunity, thinking that it could grow into something bigger. Because first and foremost, like you said, time is limited. We should at least be compensated fairly for our time to do something with the outcome not being guaranteed and when it's not in our control all the time, mm. then maybe it's better to walk away and let someone else who has more bandwidth who, or who's willing to do it for even cheaper go and take that risk and that gamble why it's not something that I want. So I started with that. Then also there was another defining project that also helped me learn what to say no to which was I got a gig for ghostwriting for a pretty big brand in Singapore um, and they are the last you would think to not pay. Mm. But in the end, chasing that brand. So I created lots of articles. I think it was like eight or ten articles for that brand. And that brand did not pay me for like one whole year. Wow. I chased for one whole year. And it was so frustrating in the end where I got to the point where I'm like, do I really need the money actually? I think mm. my mental sanity in mm. chasing uh, and dealing with this relationship is more tiring than what the the money I'm actually going to get out of it. Mm. So in the end, I just let it go. I Until today, I don't know if the brand ever made that payment because I stopped tracking and stopped following up ever right, since. Right. Okay, but like that also showed me then why should I be doing this kind of ghost writing for cheap? Because even if the brand is very big, it's not a guarantee that they're going to yeah. pay me. Yeah. And that really helped me moving into my 30s. So when I got similar project or similar request, I'm like, no, I learned my lesson. No. Pay first. Yes, correct, correct. <laughs> or at least pay half first. 50% yeah, up first. Correct, correct. <laughs> yeah, there needs to be certain things being settled first before I'll take it on. And I think that has really been helpful because if I didn't have those experiences in my 20s, I don't know if that would have informed my this framework of saying no. Maybe I would have learned through other methods like you guys mm. learning on the podcast. <laughs> no, like, I think sometimes something students have experience and then yes. go, okay, you know what? I'm never doing this again, right? Let's yeah. learn. Yeah, I agree with you. And I, I think our journey is relatively similar because I am technically still in my 20s. <laughs> uh, look like <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah I, I, right, he looks like he's 20 look like la, but like the way <laughs> he like, talks yeah. and communicates it don't look like <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you I'm leaving my 20s next year and I, I think this is like the turning point I don't know if it's the same for everybody but like for you it is right like in moving into your 30s you start to realise that hey you know like I cannot just take everything that come to come my way anymore because there are things that if you do that you will need to sacrifice like yes. time with the people you love right? yeah. family, friends health Yes. Right and uh, certain other things lah. So that's why we click quite a bit lah. Maybe because we walk a similar journey, and I'm also starting to realize I gotta drop some stuff lah. Because I don't want other aspects of my life that is not work, like health and relationships to suffer. Right, uh, the health portion is is gone gone case really, but it 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 shouldn't get worse. Right, relationships thankfully still great. I still have great relationships with my family, my wife, and my friends, and I I foresee that if I continue to be a super ultra hustle multi hyphenate person like that's gonna suffer right in due time so I, I think maybe it's the the maturity of like that comes with making all these mistakes in our 20s that um, help us move into our 30s with a little bit more of a clarity of what to actually say no to mm. because there's a little bit of FOMO right like a good opportunity comes your way and it's like ah oh, you know if I don't take it on then like oh yeah. what if what if you know just now off camera we were talking about we usually regret the thing we don't do rather than the things we do and and that is something that I live by also so like do la what's that to lose do la what's that to lose and you realise that actually have la have la got things yeah. to lose you, you do something and get thrown into jail for 10 years that's a bloody big thing to <laughs> yeah, lose yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Uh, assuming that it's not illegal la. assuming yeah, that it's yeah, not yeah. illegal something cannot yeah. Yeah. yeah but I think when you know in your early 20s like late teens like you really got nothing to lose man. you got no money nothing to your name the only no thing you have is time Exactly. Mm. So you just spend no? yeah. just the current you have to spend the currency that you have. Yeah. But I guess you know when we have more commitments like a mortgage and uh, goals of fire and stuff like that, like we, we spend our time doing that. The focus becomes a lot more important. But I, I do think the trying part is very important so that we can actually be somewhat mature or wise enough to discern what to say no to. 
Mm. Right, at some point in our life. Yeah, so if we were to put all these together, Anthony, you've said your framework is quite clear. Mm. Yours is you measure it in terms of your bandwidth. So your time, right? That's the first and then negotiable versus non-negotiable. That's how you define and decide what to say yes versus no to. Mm. For me, it's my learning lessons and also like the money. Yeah, for me, yeah. sorry, money first. Huh? We, we all want to retire. Yeah, yeah, yeah we all yeah, want to want... <laughs> oh, sorry, financial independence. Right? We're all influencers, <laughs> right? We want, oh, no, you, you guys are. I'm not, I'm not. I'm just a person. <laughs> I, don't even have a, I don't even have an Instagram account, as you found out. <laughs> yeah, so we do want to at least get compensated and not risk being like asked to do something and not getting anything out of it. So we are the one paying with our time, with our help, with our effort, with our everything and yeah. not any, getting anything with it. Mm-hmm. So that's my framework. But JJ, what's your framework? I think generally, you know, what, what I talked about in the previous episode, what, what is still non-negotiable for me is I must enjoy it mm. to a certain degree and, and not just I don't hate it. Like I need to be excited to do it to, to a certain degree. La. It might not be my favorite thing to do in the world, but I need to be excited. And, and the things that, the sacrifice that we make when we do the thing needs to, the, the financial returns needs to justify. Yeah. Right. So of course, I mean, we're all here to make money, even though money is not the end goal. It is a very, very good, I guess, tool for us to eventually do what we really want to do without considering um, anything that might negatively impact our livelihood mm. right so i think these two things and uh, are, are very important at this juncture in my life mm. Mm. i think money should be enough to at least take away any potential pain you feel on it right and that pain can come from your time or your effort yeah so but the money is enough to take away that pain right then the rest is easy really. correct <laughs> although I, I must say um that there are some there is something that money cannot take away correct right even if you know they pay you 500k, 600k a year, you know, and, but they make you work till 3am, 4am and they shout you every day. It's just not worth it. Yeah. yeah. Right? Because if you can draw that amount of money, you can draw half and be in a more comfortable space. Yeah, why not? Mm. Right? And, and that's still a good amount. F- right? And that's F- still F- a cu- amount that you can be very comfortable with. Yeah. So, mm. you know, I think we, we are all kind of financially inclined, but I think we also all realize that money is not the be all and end all. Yeah, it's, it's a nice motivator. I, I actually think about it as it's the minimum, right? Like enough money, then we can talk. Yeah. Then we can talk about all these other things that you know are nice to have. Um, not enough money, forget it. Like you can have all the other nice to have. It it doesn't really help anything. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, so now that we've figured out how to say no to uh, and what to say no to, we've come up with that framework. Mm. Uh, the next big question though is how do we say no? In mm. essence, how do we deliver that no? And as a communications lecturer, you can. <laughs> 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 you can give your take but yeah this is the difficult part right because mm. it's very easy to say yes 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 okay I'll do it but how do you turn someone down without hurting their feelings go ahead Oof. I think it depends on what the thing is and in person to person right like for, for me personally the things that I'm cutting I, I don't necessarily have to turn someone down so you don't have to account to someone for the no. You can slowly stop doing it and then it all naturally disappears. Oh, you just right? fade away, right? Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Not really, lah. But I think mm-hmm. for, for, for me personally, what I usually cut out first is the roles that I feel like I am more replaceable on. Mm. Right. Um. I. I'm not like. For example. Um. One of the things that I will be slowing down on or dropping is uh one of my with the schools that I'm teaching at, and um. I mainly teach like presentation skills, communications, and I think that a lot of people can do that also. Right. Uh. At, at that basic level, a lot of people can do that also, and I'm not exactly super irreplaceable there. So that means the value I bring to the table maybe slightly different from other people, but it's not irreplaceable. So I drop first? Huh? Yeah, easier to drop. People can find replacements. And some of the other stuff that I have dropped, like marketing clients or like people that I work with very closely, I think for us as, as freelancers or, or business owners, I think the relationship is very important. So we cannot say, you know, so to do so kind of thing, right? We, we have to... You don't ghost them, right? Correct. I don't hope to. La. So like for one of my very, very long time clients or like uh, companies I work with who I am a contractor as a consultant, I give them basically one year notice. Right, I told them that hey, by the end of the the twenty twenty three, right, I'm I'm going to focus on other stuff like my podcast studio and real estate. So that means by the end, I, I wouldn't be able to continue on anymore. So in that one year, apart from continuing the the workload, is to 
hopefully look for somewhat of a replacement for them. So even though I'm not a full-time employee, it's it's that responsibility la, to, mm. to the client that like, hey, if I leave, right, I don't want everything that I've built for you to just crumble to the ground, which will hurt my reputation and destroy your... Okay, maybe not. I'm not that valuable that you'll destroy your business, but it, it will at least make a little bit of a dent, right? So, so you're so, doing a handover well. Yeah, yeah. Like a, like a full-time employee, yeah, even though I'm not, <laughs> right? So, so do that for every single client and slowly, slowly, hopefully there's a transition period and um, so that's why the transitional period can be very, very hectic and stressful mm. because you don't really want to, um, like it's less about the reputation part for me, but I, I don't really want to see the things that I've built for my clients to just crumble away just because I'm not there to handhold the projects, right? Because it takes effort and time to build it also. So I, I think maybe, yeah, so like how we, how I have chosen to do it is to drop the the things that I feel like I'm re- replaceable right first because it will not make too much of a dent to the operations of whoever I'm working with and then the next ones would be the okay it takes time right so we have to start somewhere we give our clients or the people that are working with some kind of notice but I do think the first ones that should go should be the toxic ones mm. Just like really, the ones you don't like, <laughs> yeah, the toxic, the ones that is giving you a lot, a lot of headache. No matter how much money is making you, no amount of headache is worth uh, the amount of sacrifice that you make. Because literally, I just paid one thousand five hundred to figure out the cause of my headache. Yeah, <laughs> I hope you got insurance. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't covered. Oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, so that one, Lord, drop, drop the toxic people first and put it to them in a very, very nice way. Like, I think actually most of the time, right, just being honest in a very good EQ manner is a good way. I mean, one of the reasons why I personally choose to drop certain things is because I do not want to sacrifice my health further Mm. and I do not want to sacrifice the relationships in my life further. So I just am honest with my clients. I want to focus on real estate and my podcast business and some of the other stuff that I'm doing, like spending time with my wife, learning how to longboard and stuff like that. Um, Therefore, I I cannot really work with you anymore. It's not you. It's me. It's me. <laughs> it's it is my fault. It's but my it's, fault. it's true to some extent. Yeah. Like, I do yeah. enjoy a lot of my work, but at some point, you know, something's got to give, right? And, and sorry, it's, it's you. Like, I cannot give my wife, I cannot give my relationship with my <laughs> wife and my, and my, you know, my friends, you know, like, so, so, so it's you. Like, so I'm sorry. <laughs> I think that's really good advice. Um, I picked up two things that I want to expand on. One is the, it's not you, it's me. I think that's definitely a very good framework to think about how to craft the no. Mm. I've also done that. Um, mm-hmm. So like one of the most recent things I've said no, no to was to a client where I simply explained uh, I just don't have the bandwidth. I truly love working with you but I look and access uh, all the things that I have on my plate now and I realise moving into 2024 is not something that I can realistically keep up to to match you and my own standard. Mm. Yeah, so I... Uh, hmm. I, I didn't do the handover for that because I wasn't in a position yep. to right. uh, but I had, think also the second thing that was really good which you brought up is the handover so I remember it brought, brought up memories of when I was still teaching tuition in my 20s and I had to give up on a primary 4 kid because number one it was really difficult to teach it was causing me such a headache because I was teaching and she just didn't get it and I think I didn't have the patience in now or the creativity to teach in other ways so that she finally gets the content. Mm. I just couldn't anymore. And the second thing was also because like I was moving into hall. Mm. So the location just didn't make sense for me anymore. So I had to f- find a replacement. And what I said was I told the the parents were on really good relationship terms mm. with me. So I felt bad saying no, but I recognized it was necessary. And what I did was a handover method. Mm. Like she got a friend and I asked, do you want to take over yeah, um, yeah. this? And it, my friend was very happy to take over. Right. So I said, hey, I have someone to introduce if you don't mind. Do you want to do a trial lesson? If you're happy with her, like we can swap because I won't be able to take this anymore. And yeah. I think the clients or the people appreciate if yeah. we are able to do the handover. No, like, like this, at the end of the day, this, this boils down to client service and again, trust and relationship, right? Yeah. It's about being responsible, taking ownership. I cannot do this for you. I, I There's somebody else that I think is really good, might be a good fit. Why don't I recommend you, right? You, you yeah. build that connection. You hopefully maintain that relationship. You don't be an, an, well, a, a, an asshole about it. Yeah. I'm trying not to be too mean. Yeah. Um, and then hopefully, you know, that, that helps you going forward as well. Mm-hmm. As, as with a lot of things in life, especially if you want to, maintain the relationship it's about you know being open being sincere mm. and and being you know nice and not too emotional and, and mm. hopefully that smooths the process That's change is difficult right they, they will much prefer you go, going on and you don't have to worry about it than to adapt to some other person and, yeah. and all of that so yeah. so it becomes a matter of 
putting yourselves in their shoes and then thinking what can help mitigate the change mm. so that it helps yeah. make it a bit smoother. Okay, so yeah. pretty good. I think we're all clear on that. Two uh, good ways of framing that no. But then the bigger problem comes in, how do you get out of it when you say that no? But then the other party guilt trips you or attempts to guilt trip uh, you into saying, in, uh, turning back that into a yes. I think that's the yeah. harder part. How do we actually go out right, of it? I, I, I actually think conversely, if that happens, right, it makes it easier for you. Because if the person or the, the brand or the company guilt trips you... Tries to do that sort of thing. They're not a person you want to work with. Correct. Like, they, they do not value you. They do not value the person that you are. And, and that's why people usually hire you, right? And I, I think that makes it even clearer that I gotta, I gotta drop these people, right? I gotta drop these people. And if the people cannot see your value, then sometimes maybe the responsibility is not to the job but to yourself because we have we have to take care of ourselves before we take care of the people around us and sometimes some bridges that have to burn then then so be it mm. what about ways whereby we can still get out of it without burning bridges so i give an example i think that's easy if the relationship is not so entangled mm, not so true. close but what if let's say it's like your cousin your aunt your right. best friend and you're like oh but you're the only one who can help me jj like if i go to any other content studio just just rip me off or blah 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 how? How to get out of it? There's a real personal relationship at stake there and they're trying to use that to guilt trip you into... Maybe they're not deliberately guilt tripping you. Mm. That sounds so mean. Yeah. But they just don't want your no. And they're trying to talk you out of it. How can we then get out? Generally, I think telling the, the truth and just... Okay, maybe not telling the truth, but being genuine is like a very, very good approach in my opinion, lah, right? Because if if you know you 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 try to break up with the person and the person says, No, right, I don't want to break up with you, right? And I, I think just really being honest with the person of how you feel and and what the outcomes could be is important. It's like, okay, you know, like if if we if we continue working together, it is a possibility, but the work that I do for you might suffer and, and I don't wish to see that happen because that will strain our already good relationship. But we try to be genuine and authentic to help that person see what we are seeing because at the end of the day, we want to leave someone, we want to break up with a client. It's rarely because the client is a bad client. If not, we, don't have work, we wouldn't have worked so long anyway, right? But it is really due to some kind of personal reason that you know, you, we don't want to our our personal reasons to affect our clients' progress, their business. So we just be authentic and genuine and tell them that law. And if they still cannot see that, then maybe I'll ask you for advice. What, what do you what do you guys, what do you guys think? <laughs> Actually, I was gonna press that even further and say, let's say you did tell that to the client, but let's say out of the you are having five projects on hand and you're dropping three. Because mm. you would deem these as the most time-consuming or most toxic, whatever. Lah, okay? But the client knows because they're friends with the other two. So they, so they know that you're dropping them and still keeping the other one. Mm. So they're trying to like maybe, you know, guilt trip. Why are you emotional. sacrificing me for them? Am I not important enough? I thought we yes, were good friends. Not. I've known you for longer. <laughs> then how? Then I'll say, you know, my friend, I I think Sufu came in chang the I think it then it boils down to the, the person lah, right? I I think everybody has a communication style. How we break the news to people largely depends on the, the person's style of co preferred communication. And I think maybe some clients and relationships take time, right? And if the breakup cannot happen immediately, then we see how we can handle it over time, no? right? Which, which uh, goes back to the, the handover strategy, right? Of like maybe easing it in and, and letting someone take over. Like for example, I would think that, okay, you know what? Maybe I don't drop you directly, but is it okay if I offload some work to someone and then, you know, we, we just take it from there, no? mm. right? Something like that. Yeah, I think mm. that's a good strategy. It helps to mitigate. Anthony, anything to add? Yeah, I mean, to me, if the original process was clear and I know very clearly that I have to drop you, right? I think there, there is very little amount of begging that you can do unless you do something that drastically changes the original equation, right? So so if, for example, my reason for dropping you was, well, I like the other client more, the other client pays you more, why, why the hell should I go with you, right? And then and then they start throwing in more money. They go, okay, lah, maybe you can consider. But if they're just guilt tripping you without anything that changes the original equation, then forget it, right? If I still want that relationship with you, I could give up something else that's not my service. So what's your concern, right? Mm. If it's a referral and then, you know, I, I'm scared that other people rip me off. This is a person I trust. He won't rip you off. Mm. You know, 
this, this is, why don't we get the price ahead up front? I, I help you talk to that person first, right? And then you build that bridge. And then, so, so you transfer a bit of that trust over. And then maybe that helps a bit more, right? Mm-hmm. And, or maybe it's like, okay, they are a bit more expensive. I, 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 I take it as I'm building my relationship. I, I pay a price to keep my relationship with you, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. I'll pay that $100 difference. Mm. Right, and then you you go with them. I will help you make the introduction. You know, they will know that you are my friend, so that they know that they treat you well, and then all, all of it. So you yep. we address your concerns that way. Yep. And if it comes at a monetary price to me because I want to maintain that relationship, then so be it, lah. Mm. Or if you decide that that, that relationship not worth a hundred dollars, you also <laughs> you also know, lah, right? You you know deep down that this is not a relationship we want to maintain. Yep. Just burn that bridge. It's fine. Mm. A lot of chances to build new bridges. I think for me, um, on top of all the tips that you all have shared, which is very helpful and I hope our audiences are taking away some notes um, on how to say no. One thing that I've also pressed on is the work ethics. Mm. So I think a lot of my followers or people who have worked with me, my readers, my audiences who have seen me over the last 10 plus years, they know already that Dawn's work ethics is very strong. Mm. I have very high standards that I hold myself to. It's not necessarily someone holding that me to that standard but it's my own self-imposed ones right and hence when I say no to something I always make it very clear in me communicating that that there's a reason why I need to say no here because I feel I will not be able to maintain or hit that level of work quality or work ethic that I expect myself to give if I am doing this with you Mm. so once I make that very clear to the client then Hopefully they don't try and keep treat or try to yeah. like oh please are kind you know I mm. I I'm quite soft hearted so that does get to me sometimes but I try and mm. make it very clear upfront first yeah. like yeah. it's really me wanting the best for both of us and I can continue but it's not fair to you because you're you're not getting my hundred percent and I can feel bad internally but and behind your scenes but I'm still saying no to you yeah, yeah. <laughs> right like you can go through me and I'll feel bad I, I I'm not a social path right I will feel bad but <laughs> at the end of the day. It is what it is. Yes. <laughs> you know? yeah. Agreed. Agreed. I think yeah. it takes power and some self-awareness to recognize that we need to disentangle feeling bad versus yeah. what is actually good for our mental uh, or, or what you should Agreed. do. Yeah. Right? Just Correct. because something feels good doesn't mean you should do it. Otherwise, exactly. you all do drugs. Just because something feels bad doesn't mean you don't do it. Yeah. Which is why I should exercise. Yes, like but drugs yes. or opium. Yeah, please don't <laughs> no. do that. They're bad. That's a really good example. <laughs> yeah. Really, really good example. Okay, so those are really good tips. Okay, then. So in this case, how do we decide? So now that we know how to decide what to say no to, how to frame the no, how to escape when people try to kill trick us and turn that no into the yes. What else can we do to make sure that we're really saying yes to the right things? I think the only way to know if you're saying yes to the right things is to say yes to the wrong things. A process of elimination, mm. in my opinion, which is my, my own personal journey. La, learn from experience. Right? Yeah, my own personal journey. You, 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 kind of, you don't really know if you like it or are good at it unless you try it, right? So I think process of elimination is a good, I guess, way to go about it. Yeah, know? I think so- some things you cannot learn from listening to podcasts or, <laughs> yeah. or trying to learn from a textbook or listening to a lecture, you know. Yeah, we, some things, we got a lot of good tips here already, but yeah, yeah. you need to learn But, but this is the tip you need to take away, right? Go do it. <laughs> <laughs> this is the tip you learn. Go do it. And that, that's why sometimes it's, it's experience, right? It's about getting, and it's that process of growing up as you do more things and experience different things. Then you go, okay, fine, you know, I can... I, this is something that I've done before has worked well for me I would like to do it again this is something that I've done before ah, I, I really do not like it I'll, I'll never touch this again mm-hmm. unless somebody like buys me right like literally bribes you do it otherwise I won't do it so you know, it's, it's just growing up la, and yeah, yeah. we'll okay. get there for me one framework that I use um, a lot in making decisions is what the impact will be on my own personal brand and my own like reputation Mm. So if some even if something doesn't pay well, but it's good for my reputation and brand, I would do it. Like this, uh, you see, we're not being paid to be here. But right. Yeah, it's good for... I, I, don't, I don't even have a social media account. <laughs> like, I don't even have a branding effect, right? Right, right here. <laughs> it's our icky guy. Okay, but anyway, yeah. So like, <laughs> if it's good for our reputation and our long term, and I think that's something that I would say yes to. Mm. But if it's something that is good in the short run, but will hurt my long term credibility, reputation or branding, I will feel very bad, but I will insist and keep psychoing myself to remind myself that I need to say no. Mm. So like a lot of like examples, right? Deals or offers or sponsorships 
uh, whereby I don't really believe in the product or service. Right. Even if the client offers me 10 or 20k to do What if they offer you an amount enough that you can retire tomorrow? Then <laughs> if, if I can retire tomorrow and I no longer need my reputation Then the long term doesn't matter. Uh, then the long term doesn't matter, then I will do it. But the reality is, where got such money? Where got such bill? Don't have lah. <laughs> and then I need a long term until you come back and bite yeah. me, right? So uh, mm. I can take that and then no one will buy my best selling book. Then I cannot mm. be best selling author. I yes. cannot. <laughs> how, how about <laughs> if someone offers you an amount that you can retire in the midterm? So for example, uh, has happened to, to my friends or and me a couple of times before. You know, we run businesses and whatever. Sometimes like an investor. And it's an a, exit, right? Correct. A yeah. partner comes in and say, okay, you know, I'm going to buy XX amount of this company for XX amount. And you know that in three to five years, if you continue to build this company as uh, somewhat of a co-partner and employee, by three to five years, you will be able to fire would you take up take up that opportunity, or would you say no? If even if you know you have to suffer a lot in that three to five years, I think it's more. Yeah, what if of somebody what wants to invest in F- um, SG budget bid, and it's like <laughs> we will go regional. Yeah, exactly. Right? We will um, go international. You are an employee. <laughs> you know, you no longer have control over everything. I actually did almost go that stage. Uh, a few years ago, mm. so during the pandemic, uh, an investor did come up to me and say, like, he would want to buy over budget bid. Yeah. So he asked like to put together the tax or income statements and then he would offer a valuation on it, a PE lah. Mm. And the number that he said he he gave was like three to five X PE. Which I know right. was decent. Yeah. It gives me an exit um at about three or five years worth of my earnings. Mm. And then like I can just like maybe one year employee handover build mm. up and then go and start up something new with that new capital. Right. right. But in the end I decided against it because I realized like number one Budget babe is inherently me. I can't disconnect myself from the brand as much as I try to. Mm. So even if I took that money, the short term can do very well, right? But the long term consequence of it on my credibility and reputation is going to be very hard to get it back. And I'm a huge Warren Buffett fan, right? He always says like, you know, you can just destroy your reputation in an instant. So don't, yeah. Never do anything that will destroy that because once you do, once mm-hmm. that's cracked, you will never be able to repair it. So it's something that I really think about when I make every single decision mm-hmm. as to what kind of project to do, mm-hmm. what kind of jobs or, or gigs to take on and what to say yes versus no to. Mm-hmm. And I think, but to be fair, I think honestly in the world today, especially with KOLs and influencer and online marketing, there are a lot of such deals. There yeah, are a lot of absolutely. people who do take up because the short term hey, is very lucrative. And it doesn't matter. They, they don't see the long term picture. Mm. But I, I feel, I believe audiences remember. Mm. And they do remember even if they don't be a hater and upright correct you publicly. They yeah. will remember if you once diss a brand only to turn a, and do a 180 because you were paid. And yeah, the internet never forgets, right? Yeah. The internet never forgets. They may not yeah. say it, but yeah. people remember. And it could just come back to bite you in the ass one day when you least expect it. So so maybe then the lesson into this exclusive is that when you build a brand in your side hustle, right? Don't tie it too much to yourself. Mm. Right? You want to build a company that you can sell. So that's your exit <laughs> and you can retire early. Yeah, don't be like budget babe. You cannot disentangle. <laughs> yeah. but, but sometimes you don't choose like the what what works out for you right so like for you actually budget bit really worked out for you and maybe if you had disentangled the the brand from you it, it might not have worked out as well as it did it might have felt a bit less yeah. authentic yeah yeah, so, yeah and if actually now that y'all mentioned this right i think it's also the timing because the time when i came out at that time everyone was a personal brand we mm. had folks like Lino and Dr. Ralph, which is Elvin, and everyone is just their own personal brand. It's right, not right. like separate. But it was only a few years after I came out and as social media started changing, then we see the finance brands come out like the Simple Sum, Set Finance, Works Every Man, and right. now they are like a standalone. It's not tied to whoever the face. And the right. face of the person behind it is less important than the brand itself. Mm. Yeah, see, we can replace Reggie, it's fine one. <laughs> <laughs> but I think the key thing to note is it was the timing. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Because if maybe if the question here and no one will ever have the answer is what if the work salary men being so popular and successful as they are, if they had started before Budget Big? Mm. And the work salary men, would they have succeeded? Mm. Uh, that's a question nobody knows. I, I think I think social media as a business changed, right? Yeah. Yeah. Which is why yeah. the, the practices and all that kind of shifted along yeah. with yeah. the trends Absolutely. as well. Correct, correct. And then you could also argue as a result that as we then moved from personal because that time it was like all the Xiao Xie Bong Chu Chu everyone is their own mm. then it started moving into okay now it's a brand it's a company like the what are some examples Wow Bananas yeah yeah, Banana, yeah yeah and, and then yeah. like uh, that, that's, that's, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah right so it's all like separate right? right but you could then also argue because that then started moving that direction 
the next gen who is their own may then now stand out. Mm. But it's always a trade-off. Mm. La. There will be pros and cons. You cannot run away or disentangle yourself. Yeah. In the I, I, are you interacting with a person or are you interacting with a brand, right? Yeah, yeah that, that's, absolutely. That's the All right. And people difficulty. like different things. Yep. Different stuff uh, go viral or are uh, more favoured at different times. Mm. Yeah, I think I'm comfortable where I am. I mean, the sad thing is I can never probably exit, but I'll, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. La. And I'm okay you you will earn no, enough uh. to exit. You don't need, a, you don't need an investor to come <laughs> in la, and buy it. I will, I will just continue <laughs> until the day comes to a budget bit can take on things without even caring whether the client pays. Ah, yeah. Maybe that would be <laughs> the Then it becomes fire. a hobby. Yes. Yes, correct. <laughs> nice. Correct. Okay, so in closing, I think this has been a really helpful episode even for me. We've learned a lot and I hope you listeners, you all find it useful because as we start this new year, we really mm. want to make sure we don't burn out. Uh, we start the new year, right? We learn to prioritize and figure out what is negotiable versus non-negotiable and really segment out the different areas of our life and learning these skills of how to do that framework and how to say no mm. and not be guilt trip into turning that no back into a yes are important. Mm. But before we wrap up, are there any, that's my takeaways. Are there any other takeaways that you guys would want to share, um, Anthony? Yeah, I mean, I, I think you know, this really reiterates the whole point that really a lot of what you should do and you need to do is just be a good person, right? Be mm. responsible, take ownership, be polite, be sincere. Mm. And that is the bulk of the way there. Um, if you are naturally locked like that, I I'm sorry. You need to um, <laughs> Hopefully, you'll learn how to act. Um, if you're like that, hopefully, you'll find success. It really just, apart from all the other fluff that we talk about, okay, not fluff lah. We got fluff. Yeah, yeah, all the <laughs> all legit content. All the okay. other <laughs> tips and everything. I, I think it just boils down to just being a responsible person, no? Uh, not at the sacrifice of your own mental sanity and health, of course. So being responsible to other people and ourselves. Mm. Right, yeah, absolutely, right? Just being a responsible person, no? And like, just don't, don't ghost people. Be a good person lah. Be a good person, right? And break up well. Yeah, break up correctly. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Wake up well. Hand over well. Yeah, hand over well. We can't be boyfriend, girlfriend anymore, but here's another girl. <laughs> I, <laughs> I find you another boyfriend. <laughs> I'll intro someone yeah. else to you. Yeah. yeah. But okay, that's great. Um, So we hope you guys enjoyed this episode and don't worry, Reggie, we'll be back on next episode and we have some pretty heavy stuff to cover next. We do. All right. We do. So we'll see you guys next episode. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.